Big Boy's Big Neighborhood. Boy. All righty now, man. It is a pleasure. To have this man in the so neighborhood, excited. man. Yeah, we got D Smoke Ooh. in the neighborhood, man. Yo, yo. Rhythm and flow, grand finale, grand prize winner. Yep. Congratulations, Congratulations to you, man. Thank you. You now, won that. You earned, yeah, you Thank earned you. and you won that, man. Like, the, for one, when we hear of these kind of shows, you know, mm-hmm. there's been so many competition shows. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? To the point where we're like, this could be a sloppy carbon copy. Mm-hmm. When I saw who was involved from Jesse and Netflix and T.I. and Cardi and Chance, the validation was John different. Legend. Oh my yeah. oh, then once they start putting all oh, yeah, John as yeah. far as credits. Mm-hmm. What made you or how did you find out that there was a show called Rhythm and Flow? Okay, so um they reached out to me and it wasn't mm-hmm. like it wasn't it was one of the people that were involved in the show that said, Hey, this is happening. You might want to submit your application. So I still had to go through the same exact process everybody else did. Mm -hmm. But um, that person, you know, they had a special interest in being like, look, we want something different on the show. Right. Um, You could probably guess that I wouldn't have, you know, I don't consider myself somebody who who would even subject myself to scrutiny from judges. Like, that's not my art form. No, not at all. Like, (laughs) I had a joke with a good friend before I went on. Like, I don't even picture myself finishing what I'm doing after my performance, standing up there. Huffing and puffing on stage, like, how was that? <laughs> How'd I do? Like, yeah, yeah. No, that ain't me. You know Waiting what I'm on so called validation <laughs> no, and criticism. Yeah. Exactly. Hard, like. So I was like, I wouldn't subject myself to that, but unless I felt that somebody on the other side, you know, without having to pull any strings, like everything I did was, you know, go in there and prove myself. Yeah. Um, but somebody on the other side was at least concerned about the quality of talent on there enough to make sure that it's fair. It was, and, you know? and the thing about it, man, it was a lot of good talent on there. Yeah, absolutely. And they did a smooth haircut from the beginning, though. It was mm-hmm. like 30, poof, poof, bye, go. Bye, bye, yeah. bye, bye. You're like, whoa. You know <laughs> what I'm saying? 16 of y'all out of here. Yeah, yeah. And it, that it was, was craziest part. It made me sad. <laughs> and no, at no time did you think, I'm not going to do this show? Absolutely. Yeah. The day before. The Damn. day before the show, um... The day before the show, I was like, I called uh, the girl. Her name is Bianca Bibbs. I'm just, mm-hmm. she, she was like, you know, I think you should do it. And a lot of contestants got those calls, like, just so they kind of courted us through yeah. the people who they wanted to see on the mm-hmm. show, you know. But I called her and I was like, you know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do it, you know, because the paperwork. Although the paperwork, there's a lot of things in our in our favor in terms of uh, us you know, maintaining our independence, even if we win, winning right. money and being able to continue our artistry as we see fit. So all of that was clear. But then there's the the standard reality TV mm-hmm. language in there that's like anything you do, whether or not it reflects positively or negatively on your artistry will be used on the show. And so my cool. thing is, I don't know what situations they're going to, I don't know what competitions there are ahead. So I yeah. don't know what situation you're going to put me in to make me have to adjust to something that's outside of, you know, my comfort zone, right? Which And that you wouldn't happens, voluntarily you know? yeah. do. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I and in, in all honesty, I wouldn't voluntarily battle rap. Right. Know? Yeah. So um so that was what happened. That like, gotta be bad for the person you sent home. Like he don't even he didn't even want to battle rap. Old man taxi that's yeah. Old man's hey, man. yeah. But no, he's not a battle rap uh, he, battle rap. I enjoyed artist him either. too. We everybody did. Yeah. Everybody did. And the thing is, um, the later rounds, like he's a fan favorite. Everybody's voting like who would you like to see all the way through? Like to to be in the later rounds and everybody's like, oh man, Stacks. Yeah. Because, you know, the world is is dope that he's so so original, so himself, but you can tell he has that uh like both the artist acumen and a business acumen yeah. that mm-hmm. makes him make dope ass decisions that both. people will enjoy time after time, you know? So um but but as long as I felt like there was somebody on the other side saying, like, we want to tell authentic stories, we want this to be fair. And um, those things contributed to me making a decision. In addition to it being on Netflix, you know, yeah. I was like, okay, it's, it's huge. Yeah. You know, <laughs> it's huge. Yeah. One, huge. It's a huge platform. Two, um, Netflix does such a good job with you know putting out like quality documentaries and telling mm-hmm. stories yeah. and things just being shot, you know, cinematically beautifully. You know, so I thought that might be an element that could serve what I already had planned. Like. In the next couple of months, you guys will see how prepared I was for this. <laughs> yeah. And it was, we were prepared because we were prepared to do it independently. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, so this you. is only a boost to what we oh, already that, had. So, and, then, and then lastly, it was mm-hmm. the judges. Like, I was like, between Cardi, me being bilingual, she'll be able to speak mm-hmm. to that. And she did. Like, yeah. This boy is not only 
fluent, but so it's saying something. So you teach Spanish? Espanol. Yes, I've taught Spanish for some years. Yeah. I heard that, That's so bro. Dope. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. every day. And you know what I loved about when you would go with Spanish smoke is that it wasn't gimmicky. Right. Mm-hmm. You right. know what I'm saying? It right. was in the pocket. It was, it was to me, and my, my wife is Latina. It was spoke right. You, you, mm-hmm. you know, you said it the right way. Then you you rhymed in Spanish as well. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Wow. And then you knew when to do it and when to pull off. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, I thought it that was, was genuine, amazing. Yeah. It felt like a reflection of like how you explained in the beginning the how you grew up, who your mm-hmm. neighbors were, yeah. and why it's not something that you're just doing mm-hmm. just to do. Right, right. Somebody asked me um, on a post today, they were like, uh, why do you speak, why do you speak in Spanish? Is it is it like connected to your roots? Are you Latin? And then, so I was like, to answer your question, yes, it's connected to my roots. I grew up in Inglewood. It's 45% <laughs> Latino. Uh-huh. It's, it's not a foreign language when everywhere you go is spoken. Right. I just paid attention. I just listened. You know, so um, that, and, and yes, we chose when to do it because it's like, okay, we understand it's a primarily English um, audience although Netflix is in 190 countries and we're getting love from everywhere yeah, right man. now but um but there I didn't do it in the finale and right I also I did one line maybe in the Miguel around oh you know that's awesome. oh my god I the Miguel department it. I oh, have oh my no I god hey, bro I, I saw literally like, that the Miguel beginning of the show I performance <laughs> And it was what three days it. to put that together. Yeah, yeah, dude. No, no it wasn't you? three days for that round. That was like y'all got a day and a half, oh, like man. one full day. You got the night they give you the instructions, one full day, and the next day you got a show. Man, wow. y'all, yeah. I have to see did this. that, <laughs> man, that dude. Went I out. watched that over <laughs> and over. Don't sweat it, and okay. over and over <laughs> again, bro. Oh. I love that it showed though this different side of you too, mm-hmm. though, because it did get to like. You have so much substance, but you were like, damn, you could have fun too. And this right. is so, like, yeah. you let the hair down. Right. Everything was dope. Right. Hey, man, so growing up in in Inglewood, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? And, and you represented the West Coast. You represented Inglewood. You represented your family very well, bro. Thank I thought you. that looking at that and not knowing what they could do with, with the footage, mm-hmm. They couldn't edit you the wrong way because you never gave them anything wrong to edit. You know what? And and I'll keep going back to my team. I got a strong team. We said before, like, okay, going into it, they're here to make a show. We're here to utilize this platform. Yes, sir. Right? Mm-hmm. So we're like, this is a drug deal. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. You got it. We dope. We flipping. We dope. And y'all got bread. <laughs> yeah. We're going to make this fair exchange. Y'all got guns on you. It's assumed that y'all are protecting your interests. We're protecting uh-huh. our own. So anything that I was told to do, and most of the time it was with you know, everybody's best interest in mind, but show us first. Anything I was told to do that I felt like didn't align with what I was there to accomplish, I wasn't doing it. Right. And there so, were several occasions where I was like, nope. I heard that. Nope. If you notice the first round, they were like, "Uh, we had instructions. Go out there, hype up the crowd, mm-hmm. get them into it, like get everybody's energy going and then do your performance, right? Introduce yourself. Oh, so they wanted you to come out like, hey, what's up, y'all? Everyone did. Like skibbity bop the boo ain't, 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 ain't. I don't skibbity bop. I ain't too deaf on my booze either. So. Uh, like, yeah. Not doing none of that. So did they did they deem you as difficult early on? No, or no, okay. no, it wasn't that. Um I got a couple instructions to be like, hey, you're not getting a lot of camera time. I was like, as long as as long as it's 30 something rappers around, I don't even want a lot of camera time. Right. You know, um, I, I didn't want to get lost in the shuffle. So all of the hype stuff, like, oh my God, you made it, my brother. Yeah, I love you. It's like, yeah. we all just met today, bro. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like, yeah. I got real brothers. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> I love you, P Smoke, D Smoke. D. Well, I love you all the same. Yeah. I love you all the same. Exactly. You know, like, I love you all the same. So, Sorry, man. It never happened again, bro. It never right, happened again. Right. Was it difficult once it start going on to see some of your comrades starting to leave? Absolutely, absolutely. So, because everybody, when you look, because watching it, smoke, we saw the backstories, mm-hmm. and the backstories, it was like my mom passed, my yeah. this, my that, you mm-hmm. know. So mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure you get some of that in dialogue, or just being in close quarters and yes. everybody fighting for something. Yes. And you, you want to win, but you don't want to necessarily see somebody else just really lose. Right. Right. You know. So. What was that when you would see someone go home and what was the hardest one for you? Um, the hardest one was by far Old Man Saxon. Yeah. Yeah, easy. It, 
we, me and old man Saxon knew we were about to have a moment where it's like, hey, bro. Because we had, we like, he even said on the show, or I don't know if they edited it out, but he said, like, you know, we had breakfast the other day and we sat down and exchanged our um, kind of ideology on how to approach rap and mu mm. making music. And we both had this idea that was like, look, you, you have real life experiences outside of this. And the, the interesting thing about this show is that the older contestants, and their wisdom and their experience made them shine and make it through to the later rounds, yeah. right? We had plenty of young talent that was, you know, crazy dope, mm -hmm. you know, but then that experience is what carries you through. So um, we had a moment at breakfast where he was like, you know, the, the goal is to have real experiences outside of rap. So when you come into rap, you're adding some real value. You're not just recycling the same ideas that everything is going on through rap. Like, you know, Get money, okay. Mm, we did it. that, you know. <laughs> like we did, Check. we did it all. But and we gonna do some of all of that in ours too. And I think people people respect that. It's it's all uh, put in context. But old man Saxon is somebody I didn't want to go home. And they edited just a short portion of what I said about him um, on his way out, which is like this dude is the same dude in front of the cameras as mm. he is behind the cameras. And uh, there's there was a whole lot of mutual respect going in, and that's why I started off my. Uh, my rap, you know, as much as I like to jump on this mic and show you love, yeah. it's Inglewood. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, Hey, man, how long, how fast do they leave? Oh, they got plane tickets waiting for them. No. Oof. Like, like I mean, you down there on a the plane in the same outfit if you don't, if you don't bring a hoodie? It's like, or they send I'm it to talking you? about, I'm talking about, they go, they're going that night. Damn. You know what I'm saying? Keep it they're real like that, night. huh? They get them out of there. And I was like, whoa, like, like. They're, they're packing. You're like, damn, that dude got my pen. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I lent like, it to him. Like, like, he gone, gone. Gone, gone. Like, damn, I would definitely be careful who I let borrow something. Like, man, nah, you, you, you leaving with hey, it, my, man. my hoodie, dog. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, do I ask him back? I sent him, I sent him home. And not any controversy, but you had to see some as well that you were like, they're not going to make it. Oh. Like, um, you, yeah, I mean, I feel like some people were there to have moments. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And um, and they did. You know, I don't know. And yeah, I'm not gonna say no right now. No, no, no. But you, it was, it was just, it was a lot of fun. And some people were there to have moments. And then some people were there not. I feel like they, they didn't really believe in their heart that they belonged. Yeah. There. So they started to do things out of like almost panicking. You know, mm -hmm. and it's. The people that really believed in themselves, they rose to the top. Another person that I wish would have uh, stayed is Ray Khalil. Which one is Ray Khalil? Ray Khalil is the girl with the locks and the glasses. Real yeah. artist. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, She had the yeah. first verse on the whole season. The first yeah. verse. She's, when she spit with Anderson Pat. Oh, yeah. I was like, oof. I was kind of and upset I've never about seen that, that battle. I, I know. Oh, I was, I was furious. Hey, man, I thought Beans getting flawless... I thought, because Beans, I think, could have sent somebody else home. Oh, yeah. But not Flawless. A lot of people. Yeah. yeah Beans could have sent some people home. Um, Flawless is built for stuff like that. Yeah, that's man. how his that's how his mind works. Yeah. Like, he's structured for battles, mm -hmm. you know. Um, I'm structured for, like, once we made it after the battle round, creativity like, and studio work. <laughs> you and was like, this is low-hanging fruit to the, right here. Oh, Y'all should have never <laughs> let hey, me man, out of the battle My thing round. was when Chance was like, man, I didn't even you know this. Played the piano. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right, right. Because when you sat down at the piano, I could have just heard that all the way through. Mm -hmm. Like, you gave me so many, like, that's it. And then you'll get up, and I'm like, oh, my God, that's He's it. Then you go, no, I'm like, oh, that's it. You know, like, yeah. your finale performance was perfect. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And I'm talking Thank about, you. but you can tell, bro, yeah. like, whatever somebody believe in, the outliers, the 10,000 hours, and then mm -hmm. you can tell that you already had so much tuition mm -hmm. into the school of experience oh, yeah. was you was already prepared. All you needed was another opportunity. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? And you, sh and you showed up. Like, I couldn't have been in a competition and denied your winning mm. like i couldn't be like oh man that was, mm -hmm. was right, like, right, right. man like i knew that dude should have won did it make Respect. you nervous when you kind of messed up a little bit um when oh, you in a sample round yeah, yeah. a little yeah. bit <laughs> yeah that, man if y'all heard it and and i think they're working out things with the sample i can't wait to share that with the world if you hear the lyrics you'll realize how much i messed up because oh, no. it's one I knew that round I was pushing the envelope, right? Because it's so many elements at play. This is our first big stage one. And, 
you know, King Los's advice to me was like, all right, you're you're taking a you're taking a risk by doing a slow the only slow song on right. the entire show. Mm. Right. And that's what like in music, the same tempo you can do either double time or half time, right? Mm. So we were like, they 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 just saw my music video. They see that I choose the sample um Atomic Dog by yeah. George Clinton. So they think I'm gonna go mm-hmm. Yeah. What's happening, y'all? Yeah. Yeah. You know, they're thinking I'm gonna get God my damn, dad's. I'm glad y'all set on your yeah. <laughs> My dad's corrupt. That's what they thought right. I was gonna do. So that was like, boom. Why must I feel like that? I come out, mm, why must I feel like that? Then we break it in half. You know, so when we did it like that, we knew the room was going to stop like, oh, yeah. shoot. Like, just create a moment. And that's that's what we do. Like, our background is like writing writing music and producing music for other people. Mm-hmm. Like, in the same time when 1500 was first coming up, my camp was Woodworks. And you've, my mm-hmm. brother has come. It's mm-hmm. me, my brother, Sir, Tiffany Goucher, my brother, Davion Ferris. And we've worked with people all over the industry. So once you put us in the studio, it's like. Hey man, it's uh, it's not gonna be fair for him. Yeah, yeah. Not, you know? <laughs> this is what we do. So yeah, this is what we do. But that that performance, it, it was a lot of risk because I just did the song. I we just made it. It's like get it's out fresh, there and do it. Yeah. It's very lyrical. The second verse is extremely lyrical, and um, and the theatrical element to it had me running through so many notes in my head. I know I'm coming out drunk. Mm-hmm. There's a certain point when I have to set my can down. Because I'm preparing to take off the jacket, yeah, switching man. the new shoes. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? There was also a point where I take a knee to pray. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, um It's like you hitting the post. Hitting, so hitting many the post. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hitting the post. Moments. Like, damn. Like if 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 it had been a week instead of uh instead of two days, Oof. it'd have been the performance of my life. And then mm-hmm. lyrically or the story that you were telling. Mm-hmm. Like and not being able to get it out. Yeah. That's that was like th- your vocal. That was really the instrument. Like the music mm-hmm. laid under it. Mm-hmm. But you were saying what well, we didn't hear. Yeah. If you won and got through that night, you if you would have made it. If you would have got through the entire performance, mm-hmm. it would have been even more ridiculous. Because right. you got sent through on what we saw. Right. Just at the beginning. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. man, yo, and no disrespect, but your so-called mess up mm-hmm. was better than everybody else's perfection. Right. Yikes. <laughs> and the thing, and that's why the, the beauty of it is having judges like Chance, Cardi, and Tip, because the uh, they can speak to creative, like smart creative decisions that allow you to be in front of a, a large audience, make a complete mistake, and the audience cheer you on because they're just sharing that moment with you. Versus being like, ah, oh, you let us down. Mm-hmm. Like, nobody felt let down, especially when I recovered. Like they cut down how long they uh they cheered for me afterwards. That was overwhelming. Oh, wow. Did really? you feel like you let yourself down? Yeah, I, yeah. I know. I mean, yes. not down, down, but yes. So it was. I, I laughed a little bit afterwards. I didn't cry at all. Mm-hmm. Those are the moments that you fear, and then when they happen, it's just it's funny. You know what I'm saying? Because off. because um. It, it just happens at that point. There's there's nothing you can do to change it, um, but but yeah, I really just wanted everybody to hear the lyrics. Right. That was it. Like mm-hmm. I want y'all to hear what I wrote. Like, when I, when, you know, when, when, when y'all hear Listen. this, yeah, this is not competition stuff. This is life stuff. Mm-hmm. This is real music. When and will we be able to hear that verse? When they clear the samples, mm-hmm. I, I hope in the next couple of weeks, people are hitting me like you release it. And I have it, but right. I can't release it. You know what I'm saying? That's Leak and that's it. the one stipulation. It's like, hey, look, yeah, <laughs> you're nah, nice. I ain't saying nah, you're nice. Pass it over. I, I got had to get it. back that whole 250 <laughs> racks <laughs> and, <laughs> and some. But man, come yeah. on now, <laughs> not them games. Coming from um, such a, a musical just upbringing mm-hmm. as well, and being so close. Is there a so close but yet so far as well where it's like? Family on your bro on the the you know you 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 are, you are around mm-hmm. TDE you are around a lot of talent anyway just from either writing mm-hmm. or you know so exp- talk to me about the people that you did work with gotcha. before you got to rhythm and flow okay so I have a I got an ASCAP award for writing and producing uh, Never by Jaheen and I'm I Never was, what what I learned. Woo! I wrote that in a practice room at UCLA um, my first year of college in 2000. You wrote never? 2004, yes. I wrote and produced never 
um, at UCLA. Do y'all know this song? No. I don't know it. I wrote Never. We wrote a song called Taking Over the World by the Pussycat Dolls. <sighs> um, that was supposed to go for Usher. And mm-hmm. they just pitched it up and gave it to the Pussycat Dolls. I wrote uh, Why Just Be Friends by uh, Joe. Sure, baby, we could be friends. So you so, was like, oh, I'm, I'm on. Oh, studio. We in a studio. So, But what happened was, and to answer your so close but yet so far question, um, that single never was Jaheem's biggest single. He went. He only had one single on that project and did go and went gold, which for him at that time was like huge, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Um, but when it came time for their next project, they didn't come back to us. Mm-hmm. So we still, as a young writing camp, found ourselves asking for stuff from people who we gave them huge moments, but we don't know if it was politically. It, it came to like you know them choosing to go work with other people, the big names we had. And I don't even want to get us in trouble, but I have written songs for uh, for Mary J. Blige Ooh. that we were told were recorded, you know, and um, and it was a song called Stronger. And she put out an album called Stronger, but it wasn't the stronger that we put on. So it was just like those kind of experiences were like, hey, look, we do this. You know, mm-hmm. all of us do this. And it was kind of some stubborn stuff because nobody really want to be famous. Like we want to right. make music. We're good at that. Mm-hmm. We want to make music, then go to the Inglewood swap meet, then the Fox Hills Mall, <laughs> yeah. the beach, chill with all the homies, and then be breaded up, you know? But then it's only so many times you can see, like, your creative property win, mm. but not put you in a position yeah, to man. follow that up. It's mm. people like Jaheem could have, you know, uh, toured for his entire life mm. off of the amount of success that that song has, yeah. you know? So, um... We we we're now in a position to be like, all right. How long attention. ago was never? Never's never what? came out Ten in two thousand. I'm gonna say seven. There it goes. She found it. Two thousand seven. Damn. Yeah, I graduated from UCLA. So that's about twelve calendars. Yeah. That many years ago. So and then when we say, oh, rhythm and flow, that's twelve years yeah. of still working not even right. talking about the work before never right mm. and the work after never right. you know what i'm saying so yeah. when people see rhythm and flow and like oh he won it's like no nah, bro this ain't mm. an overnight success not at all those were long nights and no disrespect some people didn't stand a chance in that competition mm. bro right, right. you know what i'm saying right. like like and i don't know if it's braggadocious or believing in yourself but i would just be like dude i won like, I remember your finale performance. I remember looking at your brother, sir, and we just uh-huh. locked eyes. And he was like, mm. <laughs> yeah. It's like, get it, bro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh-huh. and, and I remember other people was like, watch, mm. watch. And I remember when you came out, I was like, ooh. What's crazy is there's, it's still to the end of the show for me, it's something unnatural about subjecting yourself to scrutiny. So there was no moment, mm. there was no moment where I was completely confident. Right. That it was that the result was gonna be what it was, right? You know, I've got major nerves in my stomach, but we put on, so it's like, and I box too, yeah. right? So <laughs> it's like you're nervous, but case. you use it. And I said mm-hmm. that in the first round, you use it, you you breathe, like like yeah, almost as an exercise, like, and then you do what you. Practice. I would love, yeah. bro, how you would take it all on the chin mm-hmm. when when it, when it, you just had this look where you were just like, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I'm yeah. like, man, give it to him. You're like, all right. <laughs> yeah. And then you never walked in like, yeah, all right. Woo. You always just kind of, all right. And you just walk. I'm like, dude, is this dude like a black belt? Or is, he, is he floating backstage? Or oh like your aura Something. was just ridiculous, was man. Cool. Have you man. talked to Chance or T.I. or Cardi since the win? I've talked to Chance and T.I. Um, I haven't talked to Cardi yet. Cardi's filming a movie. Um I've spoken with her people, mm-hmm. and uh, we look forward to working, te- working Chance together. Chance felt well. you. I, can, I Hell, if, yeah. if y'all ain't Chance, did something yeah. yet, we something will. going down. We will. Me and Chance are going to work. Me and uh, me and Tip have gotten in and did some work. So, That's awesome. Um, and and T.I. is dope, man. He's one of those people that has done so much of what I want to do. Like, while I was in high school, I was acting. Like, I was on CSI, the district, Boston Public. <laughs> okay, watch out. Been and out so here. I, yes, and dude. I was typecasted as a little gangbanger, oh, you know. No. Yeah. Which I, was, I wasn't complaining. I, yeah. Exactly. Hey. I wasn't complaining. I had braids in high school and stuff. So, they was paying 900 bucks a day. I'm yeah. in 11th grade. I'm like, Ooh, how, how many am, days? Like, how many days? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you need me back tomorrow? Like, yeah, that's a wrap. Like, fuck. Right. <laughs> <laughs> 
exactly. But um, so that um, you know that experience. I forgot where I was going. Ti. Oh, Ti. Okay, yeah. So he's done so much of what I want to do in my career, and and what's funny is we we just I feel like we're kindred spirits in the sense that I'm an educator, right? But for so many people, he's he's a voice and a mentor. Right. Right. I only got into teaching because while I was at UCLA, I was doing mentorship, like helping homework, help here and there, uh, you know, goal setting with the kids, one on ones and stuff like that. And then because I was going back to my old high school doing that, the principal there was like, when you're ready to get a real job, come holler at me. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? So I ended up teaching and. Even on my project, my project is called Inglewood High. It's out right now. It's number three on iTunes. Yeah, Go ahead yeah. now. Hello. <laughs> Completely independent. I got to yeah. grab that, bro. Got Did to. you have to ask for permission to take that photo that you had on the cover? Because you're on, like, aren't you on some kind yes, of... Yes, I'm standing up on top of the roof yeah. at the school. Or do you still got the <laughs> Now, you know that's dangerous, baby. <laughs> it's so dangerous. Get your ass from up this. here. You know? if you don't get down. Yeah. <laughs> Doing stuff you don't want your students to do. Right. No. What? Why Did is I this? ask for permission? No, you didn't. <laughs> Why is it so important for you to continue to represent Inglewood? Why is that so important for you to say that out loud so many times? Man, because I don't think, I think so many people forget that the experience is what you make it, right? So if I can say, look, I walk these same Street. streets, these same walls, these same classes. And my, I got a nephew there right now, mm-hmm. you know, and he's killing stuff, right? Mm-hmm. But if I can say, this is what this experience was to me, then people can reshape how they look at it and take advantage of what's there. Like Inglewood Highs for years had an award-winning band, the drill team, all the clubs, the basketball, Paul Pierce came out of there. So mm-hmm. there's a legacy. Mm-hmm. People ch- just choose to pay attention to so much of the negative stuff, mm-hmm. right? Which is there as well. Right. Mm-hmm. It's just, and I think my my lyrics will speak to the fact that it's just a matter of navigating it, being smart. And, you know, um, like, I said, you know, my older brother sang and Sir chose to ball for his past. I chose to get perfect grades and catch fades in the grass. Like, it's that duality that that we embrace about Inglewood, yep. you know. And um, so I, I look forward to it being something that inspires people because, for me, the city gave me that edge. Like, How did you not get caught up? And, and and when I do talk about people, sometimes I do it, and, and it seems like you have to have the enoughs. Mm-hmm. You got to be, you know, gangster enough, right? Uh, studious enough. Brown enough, black enough, smart enough, you know, uh, in the corporate room and like, how mm-hmm. did you handle all the enoughs where one didn't pull you to this, pull you to the other side? Um, I think it was just well, one is my my family is yeah. is crazy strong, you know. Before before I was eight, and I talk about this on the show, pops yeah. was locked up. He came home when he came home. He was like stellar, like incredible father, very present, all that. So. Just the home base was, we were not even just our own home. It's like so many people we took in. Like we had a relative or another in at, <laughs> at so many points in our lives. So that strong foundation allowed us to go outside and 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 just feel confident enough to say no when it's a no. Like right. we had our no's and, and we could say no. Just what, like when, when Snoop uh, asked me where I was mm-hmm. from, yeah. that wasn't foreign to me. And I think, one, people misunderstand that moment, too. People are like, you know, what would have been the wrong answers? Like, no, it wasn't a wrong answer. Snoop wasn't doing that to catch me up or anything. He was doing that to provide me the platform to show them what the West is, Mm -hmm. you know. And there's multiple ways I could have done that. I could have been like, I'm from do-do-do-do-do, you know. Um, But that's not my my truth. Now, had he asked a more specific question, we could have had a different answer. Well, who you grow up around. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. And, uh, oh, now that you ask, you know, but it's where are you from? You know, so um, just knowing knowing what our foundation is and really being able to fight. I believe in knowing how to, like, really harness your physical strength, you know, because um, we, me and my brothers have a background in karate, boxing, and all that. So. And kicking ass. Yeah. No. In real life. <laughs> not, not offensive, but that defense is uh-huh. immaculate. Like, I ain't going to go and get you, but right. you, know, you know what I'm saying? Exactly. Try Exactly. So, and that's why I say, like, we we would bring the gloves to school or, or just go in the back and go body. And Y'all were them Ferris boys. The huh? Ferris <laughs> boys. <laughs> you know and it's, it's real. You know, and so one of my students hit me the other day and was like. Uh, For some money? Before the before the finale, put me on. Before the finale, he hit me and was like, "Man, you you inspired me, bro." He was Aww. like, "Um, he was like, I was he was on the verge of gang banging because he thought either you are, mm-hmm. or yeah, or you either you're square, 
mm-hmm. or you gangbang, mm-hmm. right? And that's just not true, right? Because you can be a gang member and still be terrified Hell for yeah. your life. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Terrified and have no real courage. And then you got some real ones in gangs and out. Like you have geniuses who are gang members. Yeah, like, man. It's so nuanced, right? But what he was telling me was that like, he said, man, you ain't never turned down no phase, right? And I'm not going to tell on myself, but I would let the students know, like, look, man, like, if you need to test yourself, we can create a small little environment where you can get that off, and then we can get back to doing what's important. I heard You that. know what I'm saying? And so. They were like, no, nah, I'm uh, cool. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right. We good. Exactly. It's like, why are you talking to me like that? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> How long did you teach? Como se dice no gracias? Uh, uh-uh. No gracias. <laughs> right. So um, I taught. Two years at Inglewood High. So it was off and on. So we've been So you music. went to Inglewood and taught at Inglewood. Yep. So that was the first place I taught. Given Two that. years at Inglewood High, one year at Westchester High School, uh, a year at View Park High School, Damn. and then three years at Hawkins High School. I don't know where Hawkins is at. Hawkins is off of Hoover and oh. 60th. Oh, right. nice. Yeah. Right in there. So in different hoods uh-huh. every right time. Right in there. And, the, man, the students, the students over there, it's love, like right now, you know, and you just once they realize and I, I've subbed everywhere. I subbed at Crenshaw mm-hmm. High and I said the same thing. You know, I'm from Inglewood, this, that and the other. And then the Crenshaw High kids was like, cook, 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 cook. I was like, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then once they was like, then then on their way out, they was like, you cool, cook. Like, yeah. Yeah. The whole thing is like. That, That's that, why when, when Snoop tried to break, you like, oh, I've been through this. Period. And it's, <laughs> oh, it's just a matter of are you are you real enough to accept me and for who I am and still be yourself? And we coexist. If so, oh, we good. I and that's what Snoop was saying, too. That's beautiful, though, because I think a lot of these kids do need to see that. They don't know that there is more life outside of that one mile mm-hmm. block radius that they're used to. And also coming from, I'm from the east side of Long Beach. So it wasn't until something happened in my life that opened my world up to see, like, yo, these aren't the only options. But because this is how they grow up and nobody else is expanding mm-hmm. their mind to mm-hmm. the possibilities, they get stuck in that. But when they see somebody that they can relate to that, no, like, I did walk these mm-hmm. streets. Like, I can be like you. Like, they, you become that inspiration. And get so, around without using to you. navigation. You. you know yeah. what I'm saying? You know, you can get around without using the navigation. Right. Like, man, I'm here. Right. This is this is real I did it, you can too. Mm-hmm. It's crazy that there's so many people that want to be an artist as well. And you probably had some students like, damn, my teacher won. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, right, right, right. Oh, man, that was my teacher. I should have <laughs> right. I should have known. Right. I should have behaved still, right. What are you gonna do with the two hundred and fifty thousand? Yeah. Okay. Man. The the prize. <laughs> That's what I want to know. Because like, I thought for sure you're gonna bring in breakfast, but we'll let that slide. <laughs> Oh, well, you know, I'm not gonna fight you for it. Uh, <laughs> it's obvious. Well, you know? First and foremost, they gotta give me my checks. Dude. Yeah, I'm still waiting on that. Yeah, man. No, um, with the 250 grand, a lot of cool things uh, are gonna happen. We're gonna do taxes. Uh, a style of that part. <laughs> right. Taxes. Most of it. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. School supplies. Yeah. State of so what you gonna do with this uh, 38 thousand dollars that you want? You know Pretty saying? much. Like, what it boils down to. Yeah. <laughs> but um, no, we're gonna uh give away a couple scholarships at Inglewood. We're gonna um partner with. Uh, EAOP at UCLA to you know have a big event. The band gonna come out do their thing. EAOP is gonna give out some information about you know getting students into college. What services are already available to those students who want you know to pursue academics? Tell my story and how that kind of connected the dots for me, right? Because Inglewood, I mean from Inglewood to UCLA, me majoring in Spanish was how I started to incorporate that. I was already super interested learning, you know, as a kid, but I, it didn't. Everything didn't connect until I was like, okay, I'm a major in Spanish literature. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, by that time, my writing um, became proficient in Spanish. So um, telling telling the story, connecting people, you know, and giving away a couple scholarships, getting some people to match what up what I'm Mm -hmm. able to put up. So it's not just Mm -hmm. like a one off, you know, so um, it's a lot of ideas. The music, the music. Oh, yeah. um, We have a project that's out now, Inglewood High. In January, we have another project out. I'm gonna come back and talk to you when when okay. it's yep. time to tell you what that's called and the whole <laughs> nine. But it's ready. It's ready to go, and um, we'll be releasing visuals. Um, it's gonna be on all platforms, just like Inglewood High is, and uh, and we'll be touring next year. So we'll Man. be go you're ahead. Extre- you're extremely talented, bro. Are you Thank surprised you. that this was the way that it happened for you? I'm blown away by that. <laughs> that and that's the, a perfect question because I was like I said, we were talking about how do we do this, mm. right? It's, it's heavy lifting when you come out and there's not much of a precedent, right? Mm-hmm. We were, and we're hearing a whole lot of like Kendrick Lamar comparisons, right? I don't think I sound like Kendrick Lamar, but I understand that 
in the sense people aren't accustomed to somebody who is talking about something being as entertaining as they are informative, right? Mm. So the precedent is so narrow that right. they mm-hmm. automatically Automatic. compare you to the people doing that. Right. If I was like, if it was some turn up stuff or if it was, you know, some gangbang stuff, they would just say, it's LA, that's what's happening out there. Yeah, that's what music is doing. It's a trend, it's a sound coming out. Right. But because it's like, wait, this is uncommon. So I have yeah. to associate you with this, which we're not mad at. If you're going to come out getting compared to people, Ain't nothing right. wrong with getting compared to the greatest rapper yeah. of our era. You <laughs> with know being I mean? so yeah. close to TDE, with your brother being right. in the turf too, right. did any of them look and been like, fuck? Or you know, <laughs> <laughs> or, you know like, like, you know how you get that one that got away? Like, yeah. right, he was right here. You know what? Uh, shout out to TDE1 because they've showed me major love, right? Mm-hmm. Um, they, you know, put me on a tour with Sir. I was playing and MDing for Sir, and that was something they orchestrated. Even when I wasn't MDing, like, one time, just to get me on the tour with them, um, before I went on Sir's tour for a couple of days, they had me on paper as like security. Oh right, my right, gosh, right. they would. So the, the running <laughs> joke, right, right. The running joke is I'm walking around here swollen up like yeah. you know, I'm five ten, yeah. a buck seventy, you know. So it's it's always been love. They've always supported uh, what I do, and um, and so it was a couple people over there that were vouching for me, like, "Hey, listen to him." You know what I'm saying? Like Matt Miller in particular, like Smoke is next. Edgar, who's Sir's day to day, like, hey man, look for him. You know, so um, we had meetings, but it was always strategically like our camp. Even Sir came out of our camp, which is Woodworks. It's always been like strategically, do we go the same direction or do we kind of corner mm-hmm. off the market by being like, all right, you play this position, you know, you go over here and then right. we'll, we'll occupy this this position. So, um. You know, they've always been family, but I think prior to the show, I would I would have definitely considered, you know, signing to TDE. Now that the show is out, it's like, all right, what they were able to do for Sir um, by increasing the platform the show has done right. for me. Now yeah. we all come together and collaborate yeah. as two different entities. Who Everybody walk in with their pieces now. Exactly. It's dope. It's is, is there in, not anyone or anything, but there has to be some frustration when you work in so long and the product is so proven and you're still growing with it. Mm-hmm. But had you ever got frustrated with the business of, you know, like I'm making music, but it's the doors aren't opening or people not listening or, you know what I'm saying? Absolutely. And and the interesting thing is what we had to learn is one look doesn't amount to a career. Like we mm-hmm. had major moments. Looks, we had yeah. hits on the radio. We had, you know, we opened up for Kendrick 10 years ago before Dr. Dre, wow. you know, and that whole thing, like we've had major looks and to not know either how to connect the dots or for it not to come together is um is challenging, you know. Um, but, you know, I'm a man of faith. So mm-hmm. when something like this happens to this scale and, and for that reason, we're this prepared for it. It's like, OK, well, we see why it all why it all happened, you know, and nothing stopped us from staying prepared, staying mm-hmm. active, yeah. being creative. Like last year, I did a, a a series on social networking called Run the Subtitles. Mm-hmm. And that's what really got people, it was like this, my project isn't like half and half English Spanish by any means. It's majority Spanish, but it's, I got some killing Spanish verses. It's majority English. Right. Did I say Sp- it's yeah. majority yeah. English, but I got some killing Spanish verses on there, like moments. Um, but Run the Subtitles was like, I'm gonna do primarily Spanish and some moments in English so that y'all see that we just out here acting up just to draw the attention. And that's what had people catch wind of it and hit me like, hey, fill out this application to come on this show, you know. And so we didn't know that was how it was going to happen. You know, mm-hmm. people posted it. You know, Tyrese was like, what did I just see? Post mm-hmm. Jill Scott. <laughs> this is dope. Post, you know, Battle Cat. Post, oh. you know, and Battle Cat's post, DJ Battle Cat, shout out to the big homie. And we got music on the way too. Um, his post is what got, you know, uh, DJ Moon Baby to catch uh, catch wind of it. And then eventually it, it landed me an opportunity to be on the show. So wow. you don't know how it's going to happen. Yeah, Somebody no. said you make enough noise to so that your gravitational pull as an artist starts to attract all those opportunities versus reaching out to the opportunities. Mm. Man, you did a great job, yeah, bro. Yeah. And Congrats. extremely talented. Thank and you. I'm going to tell you, man, I hadn't been on the Inglewood High EP. Like, that's... Gotta check it Very out. Very necessary right oh, now. You got to. Oh, what? Yeah. <laughs> it's, just, it's an appetizer. 
Oh, but it's, okay. it's number them. three. And I love appetizers. Oh, man, like yeah. the avocado <laughs> egg roll. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> man, I was over at a uh, Cheesecake Factory yesterday. They got these oh, cheeseburger yeah. uh, egg rolls. Like a little slider? Oh, yeah. oh, cheeseburger egg rolls? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. But now that, you know, we're we doing this on a Monday. I'm back on my grind. Oh, okay. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Cheat day. I'm a, yeah, I'm a Monday man now. <laughs> you know, every Monday I'm on. I'm on every Monday. <laughs> Thursday, Friday, not so much. You know what I'm saying? I'm on Mondays, too. weekend. But no, it's a pleasure to have you in the neighborhood, bro, man. It's a pleasure to be here i grew up on this right here so man, you know this is dreams. crazy bro just yeah. we're happy yeah <laughs> man and once mine. again congratulations on not just the win but congratulations on everything that's everything, about to man. come because you're you're gonna earn it Thank you know you. what i'm saying and and i love to see people work hard and i love to see when when good people win mm -hmm. bro yeah man continue to win man you need security okay. let me know right sure. yeah. oh you love the man they yeah, just write him in just take him on the road but he'll what's do nothing up? what's up you know what i'm saying food. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Get him, bring it back in his half eaten <laughs> <laughs> he smoke in the, in the neighborhood big boy big neighborhood boy. super good